Hi, today we're going to extensively analyze the role of film industry in nation-building process in Iran. In the previous assignment, we have already rationalized what this form of media and this Asian country are chosen. To answer this topic question, an in-depth review into the cinema practices and key factors in terms of social, cultural, and political context is conducted. First of all, based on our topic, this research question is formed with the aim to understand in what aspects that Iranian film industry affect its nation-building process, as well as to find out in which approach and on what level these frameworks or criteria are practiced in Iranian cinema, since we stated in our previous assignment that the role of Iranian film industry will be assessed by the representation theory. In order to reach the aims above, both content and textual analysis are utilized. In content analysis, there are 15 films selected based on era and award in the 2000s, and these films are examined with a set of criteria in refers to the Islamic-based law, which is the MCIG. Moreover, a more profound evaluation is done through textual analysis, which use typical films in each era to be the samples in this method to analyze Iranian social context influence through different periods of time. We are going to present the findings under two scopes, the government and the practitioners or filmmakers, to clearly understand Iranian film industry through two points of view. In the previous assignment, we already explained that nation-building leads to the desire of nationalism, and the media, in this case the film industry, is the tool that nationalists use to gain more power by creating the sense of belongings in the community, since nationalism is the most universally legitimate to political life. First of all, in the silent era, during the Quattrar royal family dynasty, Iranian film industry follows the private model. As the government sponsors silent movies, which are mostly documentaries, footage of new events, actualities and spectacles involving the royalty to widespread its image at this time. Furthermore, it also illustrated the role of men and women during World War I, which was men going to the terrains and women taking care of the families. Later, when it comes to the period of pre-revolution, during the authority of Pahlavi dynasty, the government mindset was to promote for Western ideologies. Traditional values were rejected to pave the way of modernization as the government tried to introduce Western lifestyle to the current film industry. Films during this dynasty were imported from Western countries, dubbed in Farsi, the Iranian language. For instance, it illustrates the Western lifestyle of the woman, which opposed to the traditional perception about women in Iran. As the Pahlavi dynasty was overthrown by the Islamic Revolution in 1979, the Islamic Republic started to re-edit, regulate and even destroy most of the previous films due to the political transition, causing a substantial shock to the film industry. The purpose of the government was to use film as a tool to propagate Iranian society during the revolution. Besides the political aspect, the current film industry also reflected social changes and transformation in Iran in terms of tradition and modern, low and high culture, a rural and urban environment. Furthermore, a toxic environment for filmmakers was created as the Ministry of Culture and Islamic Guidance, or so-called MCIG, was implemented. With strict guidelines based on Islamic principles, the government believed that film was a Western tool that could harm Iran's tradition, or even worse, it would deny the role of teaching morals of the Islamic clergy. Consequently, harsh censorship was widely dispersed mainly focus on prohibiting sex, violence, and nihilism. Lastly, from the post-revolution era up to now, Iranian cinema has received significant changes as there has been a gradual development of a more liberal interpretation in terms of filmmaking guidelines, creating a more creative freedom environment. The MCIG has acted as a reformist factor as it has opened up the cultural, social, and political expression atmosphere. However, the MCIG is still conservatism-based, specifically protecting what seemed to be offensive to Iran and Islam. There was a regulation created in 1996 with tremendous censorship, such as no tight clothing for the woman, no physical contact or tender words between men and women, no jokes about the police, the army, family values, no joyful or foreign music, and no bird negative character as the current Islamic clergy must wear bird. 
Nevertheless, the filmmakers have started to pirate their own films to avoid censorship, and the law enforcement has failed to effectively eliminate piracy. To elaborate Iranian film practice. As you can see in the table, all of these selected films follow the criteria in the MCIG law with a focus on Islamic principles and values, and these values can be clearly seen in a depiction of the scene, story, and character. Despite the various topics, all of them are Islamic values such as collectivism, respect for the family, or moral choices, which are also believed as Asian values. Women has been the protagonist when it comes to post-revolution period. Throughout our cinema history, although men still appear superior to women, women now depicted with more rights and modernity. They are now the main character and decide everything by themselves. In the silent era, many documentary films were produced to spread the government's ideologies, which refers to Khwaja royal family worthiness and power, with the help from some directors. For instance, despite being the first sound film, these scenes in Logar shows military power of Khwaja royal family, the government at that time. Moreover, Godna, the main character, is portrayed as subordinate sex as she is the housemaid, and Goli Khan, the chief of the bandits, has a lustful eye for her. Since during the pre-revolution, films were mostly imported from Western countries and regulated by the government in revolution time. Under Pahlavi dynasty, films were only imported from the Hollywood. Moreover, commercial films were also the mainstream in Iranian cinema in the 1970s. That's why film was perceived to be destructive and corrupting, since it is the tool to spread Western ideologies to the youth. However, during post-revolution era, filmmakers aim to reflect what is truly happening in this country through humanistic and pure elements in the building of the plot, character, and the chosen topic. This era shows the shift in the gender focus in film as female characters began to be three-dimensional characters, have sense of grace, destiny, belief, conflicting emotions, expression of inner feelings, etc. Female characters show in movies as being more decisive and their reactions towards problems are even stronger as they stand up for their own rights. The girl in a sneaker depicts the story of a girl run away from the family of Pohola. Or in Offside, the girl group disguised into boys to watch the World Cup match since they are forbidding because of their sex. Furthermore, at this period, women start to appear as a protagonist as an attempt to love. Moreover, topics to make films not only are more diverse but also reflect the society. In attempt to love, extra marital affairs appear in film for the first time, which is considered as a sensitive topic. Furthermore, piracy is a necessary evil to enhance Iranian film culture, as filmmakers know that themes and stories they made are unlikely to be shown as their country. They do not care about the money, but focusing instead on artistic expression. Therefore, they often pirated their own films to distribute to the mass audience because it was relatively the easy way to break the censorship of Iranian government. With the aim to reflect the true current social context, director Jafar decided to make a documentary of his time, ironically named This Is Not A Film. Jafar was putting under house arrest for propaganda against the regime due to his previous films. As the media will help people choose which image they relate the most to their imagined community, the government used Asian values, in this case Islamic principles, for propaganda purpose with an intentional approach, while filmmakers reflect Iran and bring attention to critical issues of the country to the audience. Then, it is essential to assess the role of Iranian cinema in nation-building through both Asian values and propaganda due to different purposes.